Good evening guys and welcome back to another episode of 100% Motorcycles. This is our follow-on video with myself Jimbo and Rob. Hello! Uh, this is our follow-on video from track, first track day, uh, maintenance and what to expect of yourself. So we talked about maintenance of your bike, yep. we talked about getting yourself mentally ready. Yep. Um, so this now we're going to start talking about what to expect when you arrive at your first track day. And I think that's really important. So I think, I think for your first track day, because back in August, no, August, yes, it was August, 2010 was my first track day. Never done one? Yeah, I reckon mine was very similar to yours then in that case. Yeah, so never done one. Um, been riding for, no, it wasn't. Not two, August 2000, August mine, 2011, sorry. I was going to say mine 2011. was 2011, but I think mine was around I would have, July. I would time. have done it a month before I passed my test otherwise. <laughs> All right. So, no, yeah. August 2011. Yeah. Uh, been riding for almost a year. Yeah. So 11 months or so. And I had a conversation <laughs> with a friend of mine in the pub. Right. And he said, are you going to do a track day? And I said, no. <laughs> and then he went, <laughs> And at that point, you did your first track day. At that, that point, well. I think he called me a wuss or a chicken or a pansy or whatever. And I thought, right, bugger it. So we sat in the pub yeah. and I put my first track day. Really? And my first track day was down to Pembury. Right. Uh, I, think end it, of I think it's worthwhile noting, and, and one of the bits I'd really like to point out to our viewers, is there is some real advantages on doing a track day and why you should go. Yep. So one of the things you're not going to get you're not going to get potholes. Nope. You're not going to get tractors. Nope. You're not going to get anybody coming in the other direction. If there is, you've got real problems. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're all going in the same direction. Yep. Now, it's your choice how fast or how slow you want to ride on a track day. Yep. So, just because you're going on a track day doesn't mean you need to ride any quicker than you do on the road. It just means you can have a great ride knowing that there's no one coming in the other direction yep. you're not going to be caught out by anything else so i think it's a great opportunity if nothing else to go and learn and improve your riding abilities yes. so i would very much encourage definitely. someone that hasn't done it to go do your first one definitely i think i think that's you learn far more about your motorcycle within the first session of your track day than you would probably do in 10 years of riding on road couldn't agree with you more. um so First day of track day, so like I was saying, I put mine in a pub because my mate was calling me chicken. Um, so I put Pembury, that was seen to be at the time the closest one. Um, do the Google search, yeah, uh, yeah that's why I come up, you know, because we live in Devon and everything's so far away, yeah, yeah. You know. I think our closest one is probably Castle Coombe, Castle Coombe, yeah, yeah, but I'm and then it'd be fan. Pembury or Donington. Yeah. It all starts going into four hours plus yeah. after Castle Coom yeah. for anyone. So, um, so yeah, so I thought, oh yeah, I'd go down there. Didn't know nothing about track days. Um, I had a van, so the bike went in the back of the van. Yeah. Um, and because I'm a proper temperature Dublin, uh, I didn't really know where Pembury was. I didn't even, rock, I didn't even look at it. Okay. So I booked my hotel in Newport. Oh, you had a bit of a drive. Yes. <laughs> So There's I just a thought, big difference. I just thought going across the Severn Bridge, I was in Wales, and yeah. then Pembury was like 20 minutes or so past that, not no, like two a couple of hours. hours. <laughs> so yeah, I made my first mistake by not pre-planning where I was going to stay to get my night, good night's sleep. And it's really important because track days you're up early. You are up early. So it was up early because realistically, gates normally open at tracks at 7am-ish. Yeah. Um, so you start setting up, then you're looking for sign on. So when you need to sign on, um, it's not for the doll. All right. So it's Let's sign on. Let's explain signing on then. So what, what is signing on, Jim? So, so it's registration. So you would have pre-booked your group. Yep. And you would have gone in. So you would have gone in lower, middle, advanced, yep. or novice, intermediate, or fast, depending on the track they provided you go with. So you will go into their room and into the signing in room and then you would have to find a document which is a declaration yep. um, and it's a disclaimer um, so you need to fill in all your personal information um, your next of kin yep. 
um, and then sign it. And that, once you sign that, it becomes a legally binding document that you have read and fully understood the terms and conditions of that track day provider. I think that's quite an important one because the first time you're going to a track day, I don't think that's something that somebody really kind of tells you about or no. explains to you that you're actually going to go and sign a document before you're allowed on track that is going to tell you that motorsport is dangerous yep. and that there could be worst case scenario where you could have injury or death. Yep. Now, I've got to say, when I went to my first track day, I wasn't expecting that. No. So, you know, I kind of knew that it was going to be in my, you know, it was up to me and it was my own um, choice to be there. And I understood the risks, you know, I've seen motorsport and you see that there can be bad injuries in motorsport, but genuinely I didn't really expect that I was going to need to be filling out my personal details and signing to say that, you know, if I die, then it's not going to be the responsibility of either the track or the track they provide. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So basically by signing that disclaimer, you remove all responsibility from the track day provider and track if you have an accident. Yeah. So um, that is, again, very important that you have to realise actually that you have to sign this declaration. Yeah. You so once you sign that declaration, that's basically it. You're, you're, you're your own worst enemy on the track at that point. Yeah. You know? We'll talk a little bit further on that than we did in our previous video where we waffled on. We did go on a little bit. Yeah. For many, 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 <laughs> many, many minutes. <laughs> Um, so we're trying we've, got, we've, we've got the chairs today. Yeah, I know. We're, we're very yeah. relaxed. We are very <laughs> relaxed, yeah. Um, and uh, once you've done your declaration and your disclaimer bit, then you hand it into one of the track day providers. So, uh, they are normally a few lovely ladies or, or a few, few gents there. They will again ask you your name. Yep. They will go down their list for whatever group you're in. So they will set up ready for novice intermediate fast or lower middle or advanced so there will be individuals at three different positions yep. and then they'll shout i'm not this intermediate fast you know etc etc so yep. you just line up with whatever group you're in they will go down a list check your name they will check that you filled your declaration in properly and your disclaimer um, and then most important bit nice at this point you need to show your driving, driving license. license or ACU? ACU license. Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, they must see that you have met a minimum British driving standards for riding a motorbike. You motorcycle. really don't want someone going out on track that's a learner. Yeah, I mean, they're, no. they're very clearly not no. going to allow you to do that. But I've been out on track where there's been under 16s with an ACU license that made yep. me look really stupid. Well, yeah, they so, can ride. So, it's it's yeah, about so ability, isn't they've it? They've got no fear at that age. Um, so make sure you take your driving license. So you should take both parts of your driving license just mm -hmm. in case, because some providers want to see both. Some no, just no, no. want to see your photo card. Yeah. Um, and if you're really, really old and still got the paper license, then you need to take that. Yeah. If you, um, I think providers that do the European mm -hmm. track days, they like to see both parts of your license. Yeah. So. If you're doing a European one as well, um, I don't know if you had this on yours, but I did a European track day in Spain and they were very keen on ensuring that you had repatriation insurance. Yes. Which is around getting you back home again if the worst happens. Yes. Um, and not that's so, something not. that the UK track days basically don't look for. Well, they don't need to. Yeah. Because, you know, you'll just go home in an ambulance yeah. or a coroner's van. <laughs> well, that's good. We're it. selling the dream here, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> so you need your driving license. They would then check whether you've got uh, a category suitable for doing the track day on it. Yeah. Um, and they would give you a wristband. Yeah. So realistically, put it on your clutch hand, mm -hmm. all right? Because it's just a bit easier. Because basically, what they tend to do is then walk up that side, check your wristband. That wristband will be checked at every session you go out. Yep. To make sure you don't go out in the wrong group. Okay? It's really aggravating as well, can I just say, because once you've got everything on, you've put your glove on, by the time you've taken your glove off, yeah, wristband, right, put the glove back on But again. then that comes with a season track right there that you realise that actually, the time you get there, you've got time to show me track day. Yeah. You've got time to then re-put it all up so you don't have to. But that's another thing. 
that's another that's another <laughs> long-winded video um, so your driving license checks you get your wristband yep. you know it's color coded for the group for the day they just choose whatever color they've got and then make sure that you have that um, and then the, normally into safety briefing after that isn't it yeah around about eight between the call past and half past eight you yep. go in for a 10 15 minute safety briefing yeah but if you're keen and you get on signing on then do do that go get a cup of tea because at this point nerves are setting in butterflies are definitely, yeah, definitely around the yeah they're starting to start to flap you know toilets start filling up for that nervous yeah nervous poo of the day generally tends to happen a lot around that time yeah um so that just gives you probably about 20 minutes or so just to chill out, have a cup of tea, yeah. have a wander around the pit. You know, um, one of the things that I found on my very first track day was the amount of people that were willing to help yeah. and give me advice. It's that real camaraderie yeah, that I'm, you tend to find, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I I, uh, there was two gents there that helped me out all day because um, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Um, so they helped me out. So just have a walk around and meet and greet people. Everyone's there for the same thing. Yeah. It's like they say, like you, the motorcycle brotherhood. Yeah. Yeah. But you've got a common interest, haven't you? Yeah, that's it. It's more like a motherhood than a brotherhood, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> yeah, everyone looks after each other there. You know yeah. I mean? um, and if your bike breaks down, you yeah, know, there's always someone there that always wants to give you a hand, try and fix it so you get back on track. Again, digressing. Um, so, call past eight to half past eight, you'll go into your safety briefing. Mm -hmm. So, your safety briefing lasts about 10 15 minutes because generally, first group out will be at 9 a.m. Yep. or just after. Yeah. Um, just to make sure that all the groups then have their seven sessions. So, quite strict on time. So, safety briefing. Normally, novice, fast, inter. Not no, sorry, no, sorry. Normally, inter fast. Inter fast, novice, no. or you go. Fast, fast downwards. Fast downwards generally. Yeah. Because fast people have got the most experience, so they'll go out straight away. Yeah. Um, the reason why they normally do that is that you throw out safety briefing, it goes through all the dangers, it goes through all of the flags that will be there. Yep. So you've got your yellow flag, so there's an incident on track, the you know, slow down, no overtaking, mm -hmm. um, and then what you'll see is that it might be yellow flag for a couple of corners and then they go in so that you can carry on and, while they try and deal with that. Then you've got a red, red flag, flag, which means there's more of a serious incident, so that's the end of the session normally. Yep. So then what you do is you reduce your speed considerably and then work your way around the track, come back in the pits, and that's the end of your session, unless they tell you otherwise. Yep. Um, then you've got your black flag. Or, you've been a naughty boy. Or you've got a mechanical issue with your bike. Yeah. Um, so your, the order stewards and marshals there they're very good. They will look out, see whether you've got something. It could be something on your person, like your chin strap, your helmet's not done up properly. Yeah. They'll pull you on a black flag. Or maybe you've got coolant or oil leaking on your bike, you'd be black flag for that. Yeah. Um, and then it goes into your riding style. Maybe you're overtaking in dangerous positions. Maybe you're cutting people up. Um, maybe you're too fast or too slow for that group. You're doing silly things like because you think it's cool because you can wheelie down the pit straight. Yeah. You know. Um, that's a guaranteed black flag. That yeah, that's a guaranteed it? black flag. That one. Yeah. Um, so those are your main flags, and then you have your checker flag. Checker flag, and there's also is, lack of adhesion flag, which is a is. white with a cross in. That's the one. Um, so yeah, lack of adhesion. So this might be, might come out if. Um, Someone rain has or oil, really? Oil, or someone's gone on track or started to rain in your session. Yeah. So they try to make you aware that it will come out in areas of track that are prone to be more slippery than other areas of track. Yeah. Um, then you've got, you'd like to say, check a flag, that's end of session. Um, so then once you pass, check a flag, reduce your speed, um, and then work your way back to the pits. And normally they'll do within that briefing, yep. they'll actually show you the layout of uh, the track yep. and they normally really kind of point out for you this is pit entry, this is pit exit and um, exactly what you do based on those flags, where you come in, where, you know, don't stop on track, those kind of things. Yeah, normally so like say if you see a red flag, right? you know, that's like because there's a serious incident, like at no circumstances do you ever stop on track. Yeah. You, know, you just reduce your speed and then you come back to the track. 
Um, so the reason, oh, sorry, back to the pits. So that means that the track is clear, so it allowed emergency services to go out to that person that is injured. Yeah. Which was me on my last track day. Yeah. Um, so the quicker that you re realise that and then exit the track means the emergency service get out to that incident quicker. Yeah. You know, when especially on yellow flags, yellow flags and sometimes turn into red flags, but that's because they need to clear bikes off the track or whatever. And yeah. the quicker that everyone realises that actually it's a yellow flag going in and red, coming to the pit, reline up, you'll get back out on the track. Yeah. You're more quicker. likely to get yeah, back. Yeah, you're more likely again. to get back on the track. Um, as you said, uh, they explained the track to you. There's normally a diagram for that. The novices, first day track day, the track day goers, you would tend to be a novice, so they give an additional 10 minute briefing for novices. But again, run through the, the track layout, run through flags, run through pit entrances, run through noise testing. Yeah. Um, um, and then you know, any, and if you have any questions, you know, yourselves about track days, then, you know, um, you can ask, but generally when they normally ask, do you have any questions? Everyone's so nervous at that point, they don't say anything. <laughs> um, so after you've had your briefing, you will have another sticker. So a sticker will need to go on your bike. Mm -hmm. It will also, you have a sticker, a numbered sticker for the group that you're in. Yep. Then you'll have like a little sticker saying, oh, I've been safety briefed. Yep. That will go on your bike. Um, and then once you've done your safety brief, noise testing then. Yep. So depending on what track you are, you will go and be noise tested. Um, so they have that in a particular area. Um, this is why we talked about maintenance of our bikes uh, and making sure that we take our baffles with us. So you have check to... out the previous video, yep. sorry to interrupt you, we did a whole big bit on uh, regulations and looking at the noise levels and the importance of having baffles with you when you're on track, so yep. go check out our previous video and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Yeah, they'll also make it known in the briefing that using your own sound devices is, you know, pointless uh, because they have a calibrated meter um, and it's taken at a said position which is in following ACU guidelines. Um, so it's at a particular angle, about a minimum of a meter away. Yeah. Um, and you have to rev a particular CC engine bike at a particular rev yep. for it to qualify for that. Um, which is actually quite difficult, can I just say. I don't know <laughs> if you found that, but when you're in neutral and you're trying to rev, and normally it's like six to seven thousand RPMs, you try and actually rev to exactly six or seven thousand RPMs when you haven't got the biking gear. It's really not an easy thing no, to do. No, it's not, and to keep it consistent enough. Um, noise testing for your bike will take 30 seconds. Yeah, it Less take than a minute, it doesn't take You've very long. You've got to queue up longer than you actually need to do Exactly, it. but um, advice from noise testing, make, make sure your bike's warm. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Make sure your bike's warm. Actually, um, it really affects the, um, the actual DBs. It, it affects does, yeah. the, the noise levels if your bike is cold because it also you know what's in your exhaust has got to warm up as well yeah and work it expands properly. and yeah all that um so make sure your bike's been running for at least 10 minutes prior yeah. to going to noise testing go get noise testing you get another sticker <laughs> yeah you know, it's stickerville before you even this, go yeah, out on track like, isn't it like, a bit like bullseye the bully special prize is <laughs> another sticker. sticker you know what i mean or a jet ski if you live on the 25th floor of a flat complex, but uh, <laughs> uh, we don't give away jet skis in this channel, so you're okay. Um, so you get another sticker, place it on the front of your bike. They do advise not to stick it on your mud guard. Yeah. All right, so it's always clear and visible on the front of your bike. Um, and then that's it. So effectively you've done all of your requirement to go out on track at that point. Yeah. So this is now where you go and basically shit a brick because <laughs> no one said at this point that you can't go on track yeah so you're now there you're now being yeah. called so i think that's the, the the next bit is you do get called up so virtually yeah. all tracks have got some kind of a tannoy yeah um you're going to be called up beforehand you're then going to be riding down to 
Um, the, do they call it scrutineering area? Is that the Scru right? Scrutineering. It's, it's kind maybe. of the, the, the begin the beginning of going on track in the pits, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And and that's the bit where you're going to get there, and you've got to show your wristbands, and yeah, they're going yeah. to check all your array of stickers that you've now gathered within yeah. the last hour or so to make sure that you're allowed on track and you're approved and you're good to go. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, but listen to it. Moment, um, once you've got your stickers and your bike and that, this is when you want to start getting ready. Yeah. You want to start, you know, start getting ready. Get your levers on. Get your boots on. You know, make sure that your gloves are ready. Your helmet's ready. You know, have, like it's a, for me, it's kind of like a, like like a like a routine. I've got to make sure that my helmet's placed there. My yeah, I'm there. very similar on you that. Yeah, my ear my ear plugs are ready to go in. Back you know, plates are on. Yeah, all this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, back protectors on. I've started the bike again after, um, so it's at warm temperature prior to going out on track. So I don't want to go out cold. on a cold engine. Yeah. Um, so I make sure of that. And then basically you sit and you wait for that moment of terror. <laughs> Novice group to paddock area, and then you go, <laughs> and then and then you get on your bike and you go to the paddock area. So it's very good with novices. Novices will then go out for two sighting laps. Yep. And then they will make their way back to the pits. So down pit I think lane. It's I think it's different on different organisers. Providers, yeah. So generally, some will do two two laps under yellow flags, yeah. and then you stay on track. Other ones will bring you back into the pit, so you actually know how to get back into the pit. Depending so on fly. depending on groups, like normally novice will always go out under yellow flags for two sign laps. Yeah. Normally inters and fast might go out for two sign laps and not come into the pits. Yeah. But most of the ones I've done, they, you go out two sign laps under the yellow flags, following an instructor. Yeah. He will then go around, he will keep a, a good pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a dawdle. Yeah. Um, and then you'll come back into the pits, so then you know where the exit is. Yeah. It's always important. And then it will follow, you'll follow around, it will show you the route to come back into the paddock, mm -hmm. or, and then you will go on to where you would then come out of pit lane, yeah. back out onto the track. Yep. Um, so what you will see is that at every station where there is a marshal, you will see a marshal waving a yellow flag. Yeah. So on your sign laps, you are able to identify where the flags would come out if you need them to be. I if think that's one of the, the key things of the sighting laps is not only you get to know the track, but you get to know where the marshals are that you're going to need to keep an eye on for. Because yeah. let's remember, those flags are there for you to keep you informed about what's happening on the track in front of you. So as much as you need to be focused on what you're doing on track and your riding and your lines and your speed and everything that goes with riding on the track, you've also got to keep an eye open on each one of those marshal posts yeah. to make sure you haven't got black, yellow, red flag yeah. being waved at you. So once you've done your sign laps and you go back out on track after coming down pit lane and going back out of that, that's it. Your session has started. It so is. you get 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Yep. And you go round and round <laughs> and round <laughs> until you see the checker flag. Yeah. And then you come back in. Uh, like me, you're probably blowing out your ass because it's probably the first time that you've ridden your bike in anger. Yeah. Um, and you're absolutely buzzing. So once you've done all of that, I think all your nerves are gone and then you just go and enjoy it. There is a lot of prep work kind of to do prior to going to your first track day. Yeah. And that's the most important thing is that probably you're going to book your first track day. You know, there's going to be lots of little prep, like your bike, your bike maintenance, um, your own mental maintenance, um, making sure that you've got all the right stuff when you go. Yeah. Um, so things like your driving license you need to take. Um, make sure your levers are all right are good. Make sure if you've got one piece, one piece is generally fine, but your two piece levers. Got to zip together. Got to zip together and it must have a, do you know this? Go on, what? 360 degree zip. Which is actually, they say 360, but it's actually 270. Because it only goes from there to there. Was it? Yeah. It probably does with you, your belly. <laughs> if you actually get, because I've got two piece leathers, yeah. it zips from there to there. So well, it's actually about 270. Right. But yeah, it's got to zip together. It's got to zip together. No textiles. No textiles. Uh, so you make sure that. Um, make sure you eat properly throughout the day. Yeah. 
and uh, drink properly. And drink properly, yeah. Most things you're going to use a uh, lot of body fluids, you know, you can sweat lots, you know, you can have a few nervous wheeze. Yeah. Um, so you need to replenish that liquid, so make sure you drink at least two to two and a half litres of water throughout the day. Yeah. Um, and I think you'll be good to go for the for your first track day. Yeah. You know, um, you know, go and enjoy. Most important thing, first track day, go to enjoy it. Completely agree. There is a lot of stuff that you kind of have to do in the background, but if you're mechanically minded like I am, I enjoy that bit anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, you're kind of sorted, I think. I think I think once you're there, the most important is have fun, you know, wander around the paddock, meet new people, uh, make new friends, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, most importantly, just go and enjoy your track day. Cool. Uh, I think uh, check out our previous videos about maintenance, your and making sure that you're physically and mentally prepared for the track day yourself. Yeah, we'll put um, the links to those videos in there as well. I'll yeah. also link some of our first videos that we did, which is talking around some of our equipment. So I'll also link in there for you so you can see around all of the equipment that we've reviewed, that we've gone through with helmets, leathers, gloves, boots. So you can look around that one as well as yeah. uh, previous videos that we've done, uh, which is very much looking around prepping your bike and having everything together that you need. So yes. everything that you need to get you there and get you on track and get you started is either in this videos or will be in a link in the description below for you to go and watch. Yep, and what we say to you guys again, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, if you like our channel, please subscribe. Make sure you press the bell so when Rob here uploads the next video, it will give you a message to let, make sure you watch. Uh, give us a thumbs up and make sure you comment below if you want to know anything else regarding track days or just general motorcycling in general, drop us a comment. We'd love to hear from you and hopefully if you can give us those comments, it will give us something that we would love to talk to you about in a future video here on 100% Motorcycles. See you next time.